Okay, so sine answers the question, how far up are we? But we also want to be able to answer the question, how far across are we? And how far across is the adjacent, which is cosine. So we do exactly the same thing for cosine, it'll answer the question of how far across we are. Yeah, so basically it's you put a cos in instead of a sine, but obviously the graph's going to look different. Yeah, so let's rub this one out and do a cosine graph. Okay, so cosine graph, it's got the same, same sort of shape because it's to do with the same circle, except across starts at full noise. So at the start, we're all the way across. So at the start, we're going to be up, up the top at the start. And then it's exactly the same shape graph. So let's go. No, oh, it's terrible. That went it's way too vertical. We go like this. Yep. So we end up with cosine curve. What's going down here? What value, what value do you want me to write down there? Negative one? Awesome. Yep. So it's either, so one is fully to the right and negative one is fully to the left. So a cosine curve. And then the same routine as before. What's this point here? 90 degrees or in radians? Half a pi, thank you. Awesome. Well, it's this point here where it's at the lowest point. 180, which is pi, exactly. 180, which is pi. And then by the time it's got right back up to the well, the top, or actually the right, because we're measuring across, is 360. And what's that in radians? 2 pi, awesome. Good luck. And the other point where it's back to zero, so it's 270. And radians is 3 pi over 2. We're getting there. It's looking good. You have to be able to draw that curve as well. Okay, so a sine curve and a cosine curve, you have to be able to draw naught to two pi and get those critical points on it. Okay, if you can't draw that graph, you're going to have huge troubles when you're trying to solve the equations. Okay? Once you've drawn that graph, I can ask questions like, okay, when is it this far across? So if I want to ask a question like when are we in this vertical line? So I want those two points. This here is, say, negative 0.3, a third of the way across. Where does that happen? Well, it happens at negative 0.3. So the points that I want are that one and that one. Those are the points that will give it to me, give me what I'm after. So straight away, I can figure out exactly where those where those points are occurring. Yeah, yeah. So I can ask all these really interesting questions about what happens, you know, where is it at these particular points, and if it's a thing, you know, if it's a, a cam, if it's a shaft going around or something, and one of something's happening at these points, you can go, okay, it's there and there and there and there. You can get all the points where this thing's going to happen. Figure out what's going on. Really, really useful. Okay, so let's try and answer this question. What is what is this point here? Okay, I don't mind if you go in radians or in degrees. I don't. I don't mind. We'll, we'll come up with both hopefully. 
So it's going to be, let's talk about degrees for a second. It's going to be bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. It looks to me to be about 90 and a bit, maybe 120-ish, 110, 120, somewhere in that, in that region. So how do we get our calculator to deliver us this point here? Something about the negative 0 0.3, we're definitely going to have to put the negative 0 0.3 into our calculator. That's all we've got. OK. Here's, here's the thing. If I gave you, did it the other way around, if I give you an angle, 60 degrees, and say, what's that value there, how are you going to, how are you going to do it? Well, I would just put my calculator in degrees, actually. So put the calculator in degrees, and then go, how are you going to get this number here? Cos, OK? So this is just going to be cosine of 60 degrees, isn't it? Yep. So what's cosine of 60 degrees, someone? <coughs> Half? 0 0.5? So my diagram's a bit shonky, but 0 0.5. OK, so the cosine of 60 degrees is 0 0.5. So if I've got the angle, and I want to go to the, the length, for distance, for want of a better word. I use cosine, don't I? Or sine if I was going for height. Yep. How do I go the other way? If I've given you the distance, I've given you the distance is 0.3, and I want to get back to the angle, how am I going to do that? Cos inverse. Yep. So if I've got the number up this side, and I want to figure out which angle it is, it's the opposite function. I have to uncosine it, cosine inverse. So what I'm doing here is cosine inverse of negative 0.3. Now hopefully that gives you something a bit bigger than 90 degrees. 107.46. Call it 107.5, shall we? Yep. So we know that happens at 107.5 degrees. Just stopping and breathing again for a second. So I give you the angle, and I want you to find out the position. You do the sine or the cosine. So I give you the position, and I want you to find out the angle. You do cosine inverse or sine inverse. This is the first time you've seen this. It sort of looks like a lot of numbers and a lot of ideas going around. But all we're doing is it's just like a normal graph. You know, if I give you one thing, I want to find out the other thing, or going back the other way. It's just that, that, that normal process. How would we find that other point? He's asked a question that's meant to be for this afternoon, but we'll answer it. So you've asked it. So by that other point, you mean this one here? OK. Well, it's clearly. I've given you negative 0 0.3, and it's on the cosine curve, so it's just cosine inverse negative 0 0.3. So just ask your calculator again. <coughs> just try cosine inverse negative 0 0.3 on your calculator. What's it doing, Jaden? It's giving you the 107.5 again. Just, just ask it again. Surely it's going to give you one of the other answers sooner or later. Every time. Every time your calculator gives you this, this one here, does it? What a lazy calculator. It times two. Yeah, why times two? It looks about times two. But if, if I did one way down here, it certainly wouldn't be times two, would it? So yeah, times two might work once, but it's, it's a lucky guess. So your calculator is useless. It only ever gives you the first answer. Okay? This is a problem. Okay? So whenever you ask your calculator the question, where does this green line bump into the cosine curve, it'll go, oh, it's here. I've got it. I'm finished. I'm done. Yep. Just chill. Yeah, that's it. We're finished. Yeah? And you can ask it again, and it won't carry on. It'll go, oh, no, no, I've told you that. It's here. Just butt out. I'm not going to give you any other answer. It's this one here. That's it. Okay. So whenever you ask your calculator that question, it gives you this answer. So the question is, how do we get this answer? Okay, so we do it by looking at the picture and going, 
what things are the same. So I would say that this little piece in here is exactly the same as that little piece in there. Yeah. Or you could do that whole bit up to there is the same as that bit to there, isn't it? Yep. So this is going to be 360 and then come back to 107.5 which gives us uh, 252 and a half. Yep. And if you want to check whether you've got it right, try doing the cosine of that number. It should come out to be negative 0 0.3. No, cosine. Because now we're, oh, we're taking that angle and we're trying to work out what this number here is. We should be able to go 10 negative. It'll be not quite exact. Yeah, because we, we rounded it, we rounded that, it was 107 point something, it wasn't, it wasn't exactly 0.5, so we rounded that a little bit, so when we go back, it won't match exactly, but it'll be pretty close. Yeah, yeah, not, not exact, but pretty really close. Okay, but that's a great question, Jaden, that's exactly the, the thing we need to be able to do, is find the other points, and you do it just by looking at the pattern, So which is why you have to be able to draw the graph. If you can't draw the graph, then you've got no way of knowing how far you should be going and in which direction and those sort of things. So being able to draw the graph is really critical. There is a formulaic way of doing it with negative one to the power of n and a whole lot of stuff, but honestly the graph is, is really nice. It just looks, you can see what you're going, you can see where you're going on the graph. Okay, so for my money, the best way to do these things is to draw a graph, to sketch a graph and then you're off. So looking at question 2a, which graph do you want me to sketch? Sine. sine curve. Okay, so you want me to draw a sine curve. Okay, so sine curve is the one that starts at, at zero and goes like so. Yep. Okay, what range do we want here? So the question says negative pi to pi. Okay, so this is pi here, isn't it? Yep, 180 pi. So negative pi is this point here. Okay, so I want all the answers between there and there. And then the question says, find the points where sine equals 0 0.1. So that's 1. So 0 0.1 is about there somewhere. Okay, so the points I want, that one, and that one. Not this one, this one falls outside negative pi. By the time it gets there, it's gone gone back past it. So I want those those two points. Okay, and then your, your calculator will give you that one. And your calculator will never give you that one, but you have to do a little bit of work to get that one yourself. Okay, because this little bit here is the same as that little bit there, so you should be able to work it out okay. Okay, so the key thing is, when you look at one of these things, which curve do I want to draw? Sine or cosine? What's my range? Draw the curve, put your line on it, and follow your nose from there.